Hello. Today I'll be taking a look at Justice Ducks issue 3, which is written by Roger Landridge, art by Carlo Loro, and with the main cover being done by Jay Lee and Jun Chung. And the issue that I have, the cover is done by Jay Lee and Jun Chung. So far, the Justice Ducks comic has been fairly solid. There's definitely room for improvement, but so far mostly enjoyable. We start off with a news report, and we get the appearance of a reporter lion who was actually an original character from the Boom Studios run. Dip Dobson, I believe, is his, was his name. You know, this time he's not portrayed as a buffoon who's terrible at his job. Where we find out that a famous gold statue has recently been stolen. We cut to the Justice Ducks at the Audubon Bay Bridge hideout. They don't have one of their own, they just use Dark Wings. Where we get a little editor's note telling us that Launchpad's not in this issue. A bit of a humorous way. Since it turns out that it's Stagmut's birthday, and they're going to be going to the circus to celebrate his birthday. Which we then cut to the circus, the issue's title, The Smallest Show on the Earth. Which is a nice reference to The Greatest Show on Earth. As well as also a foreshadowing what this uh, issue is going to be about. And we see a bunch of acts perform. But Stagmut just wants to see clowns. And yet again, we get an another cameo of Pirate Stevens from the Duck Talks podcast. And eventually... As part of a magic trick, the, the ringmaster invites Goslin down to step into a box, which she does, and then he makes her disappear. After the show's over, they eventually realize that Goslin's missing, and unsurprisingly, they stumble across the ringmaster, who turns out to be a villain, who shrinks them all with a shrink ray. At least everyone except for Darkwing, who had gone off looking for Goslin. You know, he eventually discovers that the Ringmaster has been shrinking stuff and has an entire collection of stolen art and artifacts and statues. We get a little bit of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as the shrunken members of the Justice Ducks are able to help Darkwing defeat the Circus Freaks, which then leads to a showdown with the Ringmaster. Morgana is able to use her magic in order to distract him, while Stegma is able to get the Shrink Ray back. And with everyone turned to normal size, they were quickly able to defeat the Ringmaster, where he then gives them his backstory. Where Stegma is disappointed that even though they're at the circus, he still hasn't seen any clowns. Until he comes across a machine that has a picture of a clown with a circle with a slash through it. And when he flicks the switch to, to, from on to off, then all these uh, alien clown cops show up, called the Motley Squad. And then they take all the, the, the circus freaks, as well as also the Ringmaster into custody, as well as also turn everything else shrunk back to its normal size. And with the, the Dave saved and the villains defeated, Stegmont reveals that he actually had a great time and hopefully in hopes that they'll be able to do something like this again in the future for his next birthday. And then you get one last newscast where it reveals that the statue that had been sold at, at the beginning of the issue that they recovered, they actually put it on the wrong hill. And the issue comes to an end on a quick gag of Drake trying to put together a Darkwing statue rather poorly, and we get a little bit of a back and forth between Drake and Goslin, and that's how the issue ends. I'd say that I liked this issue better than the first two. Even though the characters go to a circus or slash carnival and find that the things aren't as they seem is a fairly uh, well-used trope in uh, kids' media, it is... I did find it more enjoyable than it just being, oh, they end up fighting, um, that they fight standards from pop culture. The Ringmaster had an interesting design, as well as that he's actually a bad guy, and he's actually competent at his, jo at his job, and is wasn't a buffoon, or he wasn't a misunderstood good guy, like in the previous issues. I did notice that there's not as much like action this time around, that it, it was a bit more uh, story-heavy than the the first two issues, which is fine. Carlo Loro has come a long way in terms of drawing these characters, and this is this is some of the uh, best work in t that he's done with these characters. Roger Landridge is good at the story writing, but he still has work to do when it comes to character writing. There was more than one occasion where he could have made a reference to the Darkwing TV series, which would have made perfect sense in the context of the situation, but he didn't which I would think that's probably due to his lack of knowledge of the Darkwing IP, where he knows the broad strokes, but he doesn't know the, like, the deep lore. As well as also that 
a lot of the characters haven't said any other their catchphrases. Like, we're not really getting any Eye on the Terror that flaps in the night, or Gosselin saying Keen Gear, or Morgana calling Darkwing Dark, or stuff like that. It still continues to be more like a generic dialogue and not the character-specific dialogue that someone who's actually watched the show. I do hope that in, in the future we actually get some more actual Darkwing villains as opposed to this just original or parodies. I am happy that the Justice Ducks comics are standalone, one-off, self-contained stories. Because I was starting to get tired of the every story has to be four issues. Because the Darkwing and Negaduck comics, there wasn't enough meat for stories that long. So I'm happy that Justice Ducks has definitely an improvement in that area. All in all, Justice Ducks issue number three is a st- solid, entertaining comic with room to grow if Roger Landridge would just watch some more episodes of the show and take some notes so that he'd be able to better capture how these characters talk and interact with each other. As well as also get some more character-specific stuff. And also, if you're going to bring in characters from the Booms era, you should bring in characters like Chrono Duck or Femme Appeal. Till next time, see ya.